for some reason, students I teach have a hard time with visualizing muscle contraction to be more unit dependent process. Rather, students tend to visualize the sarcomere and view contraction from the perspective of a shortening sarcomere, where the width of the eye band diminish. Muscle contract by the recruitment of moro unit, and within a recruit moro unit, all the sarcomere of all the myofiber, of all the vascular, and of all the muscle fibers contract maximum. One of the error kinesial student make is to express muscle contraction based on recruited muscle fiber. Though one could argue that this is not wrong, the fact remains that moro unit are recruited, not individual muscle fiber. When an alpha motor neuron is activated, all the muscle fibers in each motor units are stimulated to contract. A single motor neuron and all the muscle fibers is directly signaled a collectively term or motor unit. The alpha motor nerve that leave the spinal cord to innovate skeletal muscle are the fastest nerve in the human body. Action potential travel along this nerve at the rate of up to 120 meters per second. In other words, the motor unit is the functional unit of a muscle contraction and includes the motor nerve fiber and the muscle fiber it innovates. One motor neuron attaches many muscle fibers, one motor neuron innovates many muscle fibers. These muscle fibers, which are stimulated by motor neuron A, in this case, type 1 motor unit and other muscle fibers which are stimulated by motor neuron B, in this case type 2BX motor unit. When a strong contraction is needed, the nervous system may cause more than one more unit to be stimulated. The stimulation of additional motor unit for increased strength of a contraction is called recruitment. The all or none concept. Most students get caught up in confusion when trying to conceptualize the different degree, magnitude, or first generation range of muscle contraction. First of all, remember that the basic unit of muscle contraction is the motor unit. You learn about the sarcomere and the study muscle contraction based on sarcomere depiction of contractile protein. However, when a motor unit is recruited, all the muscle fiber of the motor unit contract maximum. This means that all the sarcomere of all the myofiber of all the muscle fibers of the motor unit are contract maximum. There is no such thing as a partial motor unit contraction. Once again, this means that as soon as the alpha motor nerve of a motor unit is depolarized in the spinal cord, the action potential is maximum, and the resulting motor unit muscle fiber contraction are maximum. This is origin of the all or none principle. You either do or do not have an action potential at a recruiting motor unit. The advantage of having only a few muscle cell per motor unit is the small motor unit that generate precise movement like a muscle of the eye. Many mammalian muscle models such as the orangutan, cat, rabbit, dog, rat, or muscle, a mouse have a muscle anatomy and physiology that differ to human. Champion sumo wrestler Kito Nonami is 32 years old. He stands at 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighs in at a whopping 363 pounds. His opponent is a female Bornean orangutan. She's 13 years old, which is about 21 in human years. She stands at 4 feet tall and weighs in at 180 pounds, which is almost exactly half that of Kito Nanami. The official starter is tying the rope around Kito Nanami's waist. The trainers are now doing the same thing to the orangutan. Well, man and beast jewels are eyeball to eyeball right now, and our starter is in position. He's got the traditional sumo wrestler goombai in his hand, and when he lowers that, the contest is on. I'm killing! There they go, there they go. The sumo wrestler is down, he's trying to pull her in. Even with 
363 pounds, he may as well be pulling a brick wall. Here she goes. Now she's getting mad. Now she's getting mad. There she goes. There she goes. I think Keith and Anani is going to have to stand up to possibly pull her into the mud. I mean, and we, we, they're both sitting down. It's just a stalemate. Look at this. The strength. Pull him in. She allows you she pulls him again. There she goes. She's taking the slack out of the She's pulling hard. Pulling hard. It's just the tension right now. Keith and Anani put all of his weight in strength, but she's just pulling hard. There she goes. Finish. Let's take another look. Kito Nanami, which means big wave in Japanese, definitely creates one. All right, they're helping him out right now. The orangutan is unfazed. Kito Nanami is exhausted. Nothing is stronger than anything I've ever, ever competed against. She won't be out. Okay, we're going to go to the replay right now. Tell us what's going on here. I went all the way to the front, crept up, and then here he goes. She, it doesn't look like she's doing much, but oh, that is so much. Oh man, that was so cold. Oh my goodness. She had you dead right there. Well, you did a great job, Kitana. Why is this orangutan so strong? To contract more muscle fibers, human must activate many more neurons. But orangutan have less more neurons than human. So they can easily recruit whole muscle fibers than human. However, human's fine motor control allow human to perform dedicated human tasks. Unlike many animal muscle, human muscle is very heterogeneous in, in motor unit expre expre expression. In other words, the muscle contain a mixture of the different type of motor unit with very few muscle, especially those involved in human locomotion genetically expressed near completely for specific motor unit type of for all people. I'll introduce the content of a muscle fiber type. Remember that I mentioned earlier that within a motor unit, all the fibers of the unit are relatively the same. That is, slow twitch oxidative motor unit have a muscle fiber that are all similar in their slower twitch, higher mitochondrial density, and relative fatigue uh, resistant characteristics. On the opposite spectrum of a motor unit, the muscle fibers of the fast twitch glycolytic motor unit are all low in mitochondrial content, have fast twitch and high force, and are easily fatigued. While these extremes are true, it does not mean that there is no variability between in the characteristic of the muscle fiber within a specific motor unit. For example, the muscle fibers of fast oxidative glycolytic motor unit may have varying mitochondrial density, can have different expression of a certain contractile protein, and may respond differently to training. On average, most muscles are composed of roughly 50% type 1 fibers and 25% type 2A fibers. The remaining 25% are mostly type 2BX. The number listed here are only average. Different muscle fiber type play different role in physical activity. The type 1 and type 2 fibers differ in their speed of contraction. This difference results primarily from different form of myosin ATP aces. 
type 1 fiber have a slow form of myosin ATPases, whereas type 2 fibers have a fast form. In response to neural stimulation, ATPs split more rapidly in type 2 fibers than in type 1 fibers. As a result, cross split cycle more rapidly in type 2 fibers. Type 2 fibers also have more highly developed sarcoplasma reticulum than do type 1 fibers. Thus, type 2 fibers are more adept at delivering calcium into the muscle cell when stimulated. This ability is thought to contribute to the fastest speed of contraction of type 2 fibers. This slide is suitable for preparing for your quiz and exam too. And could you answer this question? Which muscle fibers are more resistant to fatigue? Fast twitch or slow twitch? Which muscle fibers are more resistant to fatigue? More resistant to fatigue, so slow twitch, right? And which muscle fiber are fatigable? Fatigable, yeah, fast twitch, right? And which generate more force? Yeah, fast twitch, right? And using this kind of concept, can you develop a HIT high intensity interval training program and a research training program based on understanding classification of a muscle fiber type? What is the order of a motor unit recruitment? Motor unit recruitment depends on the force and resistance of the exercise. With light intensity exercise type 1, motor units are recruited. When the load is increased, the type 2 A will be recruited with the help of type 1 fiber. When load become even greater, the type 2 BX will be recruited with the help of the type 2 A and type 1 motor unit. Therefore, type 1 motor unit are always firing no matter what the intensity. We call size principle. The motor unit with one nerve innovating multiple muscle fibers on the left side of the graphic. With the top picture, the load is light for the exercise and the type 1 motor unit have been innovated. In the middle picture, there are more plates on the bar and thus more force to overcome. Type 2A is doing most of the work with the help of type 1. In the bottom picture, there are many plates on the bar requiring your maximum exertion of the exercise to recruit the most powerful more unit in the body, the type 2BX. And you see the type 2A and type 1 are helping. Thus, with any load of work, you notice how the type 1 fibers are always firing. Person's arm and leg muscle have a similar fiber type. Exception is soleus. And do you think you can, can you change your fiber type? Only type 2A fiber. And what type of activity would recruit the following? Like type 1, marathon, type 2A, fast but a little bit long, 400 meter, 800 meter, type 2X, and sprint. And world champion in the marathon are reported to possess 93 to 99% type 1 fibers in their gastrocinemus muscle. World class sprinter, on the other hand, have only about 25% type 1 fiber in this muscle. Generation of force, the amount of muscle force developed is dependent on the number and type of motor unit activated, the frequency of stimulation of each motor unit, the size of the muscle, the muscle fibers and sarcomere length, and the muscle speed of contraction. The physiology of the muscle twitch is studied using whole muscle extract from animals that are artificially stimulated using short duration bursts of low voltage current. Such artificial laboratory procedures are referred to as in vitro. The first time profile of the twitch is measured and the graphic presentation of this first time curve is called myogram. This figure 
represent the duration of a muscle twitch for representative muscle that are either compromised mainly of slow oxidative, fast oxidative glycolytic, and fast glycolytic motor unit. A rapid and short muscle contraction is referred to as a muscle twitch. The twitch results from a single action potential received by the muscle followed by relaxation. During contraction phase, calcium ions are released by the sarcoplasm reticulum, and during relaxation, calcium ions are pumped out of the sarcoplasm into the sarcoplasma reticulum. A tetanus is a summing of contraction. One contraction is immediately followed by another, so the muscle does not completely return to a resting state. These effects are added. Unfuse incomplete tetanus. Some relaxation occur between contraction, the result are summed. I would like to show the incomplete tetanus example. You see she is a little bit uh, hesitate with weight. Push up, push up, push up. Push up. Nice. He was uh, my grade student. Uh, I think he's five or six years ago. And he was MMA fighter, but this weight is 460 pounds, is a squat. How about let's see? Let's big breath, big breath. Big breath. Oh. oh, yes, yes. Did you see? Mm -hmm. This is how I feel after your high intense squat workout. <laughs> And he finished his first term of PT school, but I think I got this email from one or two years ago. So I believe he already became a physical therapist. And before the COVID-19, right, so we have a human performance lab and students came and during our lab activity section. They measured their uh, squat 1RM. You can see uh, incomplete tetanus. <laughs> So this is a kind of, it's not really exactly, but it's kind of the example of unfused or incomplete tetanus. And fuse and complete tetanus is there are no evidence of relaxation before the following contraction, right? Just contract, right? Does it make sense? It's a sustained muscle contraction. Yeah, something looked like a little bit hesitate, but something did a good job, with you, right? So this kind of like a difference between uh, unfused tetanus and fused tetanus. The amount of muscle force developed is dependent on the number and type of motor unit activated and the frequency of stimulation of each motor unit. Our students try to lift their 1RM, so no problem to recruit all motor units, but 
they were not trained for this kind of strength training before, so most of them could not really develop huge tetanus. <laughs>